Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, guys. Stacey and Chris with me. Hey y'all. Shalom. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about the eclipses of 2024. All right. Do you know how many eclipses there are in 2024? Mm, I don't. I was listening to I was listening to a video, and it says there's quite a few um, that's going on. Most of the one you hear about is the one on April the 8th. But you're right, if you look in 2024, there are quite a few. Actually, it looks like about five. Right. And in today's video, we're going to talk about them and the significance of them. Okay. Now, the first eclipse that comes up in 2024 is when? March 24th through the 25th. That's about three weeks from now. About three weeks from now. Now, do you know what date that falls on? On the biblical calendar, the sacred calendar, our Lord's calendar. We know that it includes all of his feast days and stuff like that. No, is it going to be a Sabbath day? This is actually around Purim in the year 2024. So that eclipse is a Purim eclipse. Hmm. Okay. All right, so now these next two are a little bit tricky. April 8th and September 17th and 18th. Why is that? Well, because we don't see any feast days on, on the calendar around those times. We see the holidays on the Jewish calendar for 2024. We have Purim and then you have Passover next, which is about April 22nd. Right. And then you have second Passover, of course, a month later. Then you have the Feast of Weeks, which will be about a week after June the 13th or June the 11th. You always got to remember they're a week early on that one. Mm -hmm. Then the next feast we see are around the 10th of Av and the 15th of Av. And then we see October the 4th. Rosh Hashanah. No, that's actually the memorial blowing the trumpets. Remember, Rosh Hashanah means head of the year. Oh, yeah. So that's actually the, the April 8th new moon. Mm -hmm. It's the Rosh Hashanah new moon. No, this date right here, October the 2nd through October the 4th, corresponds to this solar eclipse. So you have a memorial of blowing of trumpets eclipse this year. Right. So you have a... You have a solar eclipse on the first day of the month, first day of the year, and a solar eclipse on the first day of the, I guess the other half of the year. The fall, yeah, first, first day, day of the fall. spring and fall. So when you look at it, it's kind of like a calibration of the clocks. Yeah. Then the next eclipse on the list is what? October seventeenth. You should have known. That's Feast of Tabernacles. Feast of Tabernacles eclipse. Mm -hmm. So you have a Feast of Tabernacles eclipse, Memorial of Trumpets eclipse. You can never have an eclipse on Yom Kippur because that's on the 10th day of the month. Right. Eclipses always occur either on a new moon or a full moon. Right. Yeah, and that is a what solar eclipse versus a lunar eclipse. Never will you get one on the 10th day of a sacred month. Mm -hmm. We did get one on the memorial blowing the trumpets. But what about this September 17th eclipse? What day does that land on? All right, so let's figure this out using the celestial clock calendar. If you have the memorial blowing of trumpets eclipse on October the 2nd, on the evening that the new moon will be spotted for the seventh month, your celestial clock calendar will always look like this. Of course, because we have to update it. That's when you update it. With the seasonal day. And then if we go forward to the full moon, in that same month, what holy day is that? That's the beginning of Tabernacles. The Feast of Booths. Our celestial clock calendar would look like that. Right. That is what we said was October the 17th, right? Right. So it's easy to understand that September the 17th would actually be exactly a month earlier. 
Yes. So if it looks like this on the 15th day of the seventh month, if we go back a month, then it should look something like that, right? Which is what day? That's the 15th day of oh. the sixth month. 15th day of the sixth month. So you say, is that a biblical day? Yeah. Well, when we come and do a search in the King James Version for the sixth month, we come up with about six hits. Like Ezekiel 8 and 1. And it came to pass in the sixth year, in the sixth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I sat in my house and the elders of Judah sat before me, that the hand of the Lord God fell there upon me. And we did a video on this not too long ago. Is It was... Talking about the Shekinah glory hmm. and the will within the will. Right. Then the next one is Haggai 1 and 1. In the second year of Darius the king, in the sixth month, in the first day of the month, came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet unto Zerubbabel, the son of Sheel Tilo, governor of Judah, and to Joshua the son of Joshadesh, the high priest, saying. And this one, he goes on, starts talking about the temple. Mm. Asking him about the rebuilding of the temple and the glory of the first temple. Right. And we also did a video on it. And then the last reference to the sixth month, other than a time when about when John the Baptist was about to be born, we have in that same chapter of Haggai, Haggai chapter 1, verse 15. And the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of Shiltiel, governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Jodesh, the high priest, and the spirit of all the remnant of the people. And they came and did work in the house of the Lord of hosts, their God. So this sixth day of the sixth month is related to the temple and the Shekinah glory. Hmm. So it is definitely a biblical day. And like we said, on that day, your celestial clock calendar should look like this. Right. Now, let's take a look at April 8th and see what it's all about. Understanding the book of Enoch, chapter 72, where we learn that the sacred year begins with the new moon after the spring equinox. So April 8th is a New Year's eclipse. Right. So is that a biblical holiday? No, actually, it's not. It's not even listed in Leviticus 23. But the thing about it, when we do a search for the first day of the first month, we find that it's very significant, too. Like, for instance, this relationship with Noah's flood. You see there in verse 13 of Genesis chapter 8. And he stayed yet other seven days and sent forth the dove, which returned not again unto him any more. And it came to pass in the 601st year, in the first month, the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from off the earth. And Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked, and behold, the face of the ground was dry. So it was on the first day of the first month when Noah was able to actually, like I said, remove the covering and look out of the ark. Yes. Then you see it mentioned in Exodus chapter 40 and verse 2. You want to read that? On the first day of the first month shalt thou set up the tabernacle of the tent of the congregation. Then in the same chapter, verse 17. And it came to pass in the first month in the second year, on the first day of the month, that the tabernacle was reared up. So, again, we're hearing about this tabernacle. Right, so. There's a relationship between this and the sixth month, the 15th day of the sixth month. So to have an eclipse on both of those in 2024. Pretty significant. We'll see. Now let's look at uh, 2 Chronicles 29 and 17. Now they began on the first day of the first month to sanctify. And on the eighth day of the month came they to the porch of the Lord. So they sanctified the house of the Lord in eight days. And, and in the sixteenth day, day of the, of the first, first month, month they, made they made an end. Now notice we're talking about sanctifying the temple. Right. Then it's next mentioned in Ezra. For upon the first day of the first month began he to go up from Babylon, 
And on the first day of the fifth month, he came to Jerusalem, according to the good hand of his God upon him. This is Ezra going to the temple. Right. Then we have Ezra 10 and 17. And they made an end with all the men that were taken strange wives of the first day of the first month. So that was the end of all of that. And then we have Ezekiel 29 and 17. And it came to pass in the seventh and twentieth year. In the first month of the first day of the month, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, caused his army to serve a great service against Tyrus. Every head was made bald, every shoulder was peeled, yet he had no wages, nor his army, for Tyrus had the service, for he had served against it. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will give the land of Egypt unto Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, and he shall take her multitude and take her spoil and take her prey, and it shall be the wages of her army. I have given him the land of Egypt for his labor wherewith he served against it because they wrought for me, saith the Lord God. Hmm. I think that's the most significant passage at all in everything that we read. So that's saying that that's when he delivered the word to King Nebuchadnezzar? Um, no, this came to e Ezekiel concerning King okay. Nebuchadnezzar. And that, of course, what King Nebuchadnezzar did was in relationship with the temple. That's when he burned it down. And mm -hmm. That's who burned it down. Right. So all of this is about the temple. So do we expect something to happen to the temple this the, year? All, of the clip, all I'm saying is the eclipses. You can expect what you want. All I'm saying is that the eclipses are pointing towards the temple for some reason. But again, they, like in 2017, no, like in 2014, 2015, which when we started this journey, right. the, um, Celestials lined up, the moons lined up, the, 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 the eclipses lined up. Well, here it is again in 2024, they're lining up. But this time they're lining up with Puron, the tabernacles, trumpets. The first day of the first month and the 15th day of the sixth month, which, like we said, are all related to the temple. Mm hmm so, well, if you guys got anything to add, please put it in the comment section and we'll see you down there. And you can go check out the clock calendar at coachingafight.shop or check out the rest of Coach's videos. Like he's got one that's trending now about this solar eclipse that's coming. Yeah, everybody wants to hear about the eclipse and I guess after this video, I kind of understand why. <laughs> and with that, we will see you in the next class. Shallow one. Peace and safety into your home.